dad a sandwich. You have 20 seconds to subscribe. Ed. Eddie. Oh, looks like he's burnt himself out again. Right, so. Here it is. It's so big, I can't actually fit it into frame all that well. Let's just adjust this a little bit. There we are. So in front of me here, as I've already mentioned in a previous video, is from McFarlane Toys, Batman, the ultimate movie collection. So in the last video, I did do like a quick showcase uh, of the figures. In here we have six Batman, one from the, each of the franchises. Batman 1989. Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, The Dark Knight, Justice League and The Batman. So the plan is rather than have one longer video, I'm going to be making six individual videos. Just so you haven't got to scroll through the whole video which could be, I don't know, 45-50 minutes long, just to find one particular figure. So there will be six all together. And in this, uh, in this first video, in this part one, if you like, uh, I will be looking at the box, but all subsequent videos, it will just be the figure. So let's start with the box. We've already seen the front uh, at the top there. If I just pan up just a little bit, you can see there it says uh, the WB100 anniversary, so they're racing every story. And then at the bottom there, just the usual uh, DC multiverse. Includes six Batman, figures and one bat signal. So there we go. On the side there, another sort of silver logo there, silver foil logo even. Another uh, text there for what we got. On the back there, quite a nice sort of arty picture there of Gotham. I don't believe this is depicting any particular Gotham as such. Um, it looks quite generic, but it's a nice painting nonetheless. At the bottom of the back of the box, we do have images of the six carat cards that uh, come with this set. One thing to note that none of these figures come with accessories apart from the bat signal with interchangeable uh, you know, symbols for the Batman. And that's about it. So I paid £123.99 for this. Figures will be at the bottom of the screen, but I think you're getting uh, quite a lot for your money here. Very reasonable price as well. So the box opens up like a book. Held together by a Velcro. One on the top, one on the bottom. And there we go. And opening up reveals the Batman inside the box. In the bottom right panel, we do have uh, the six stands that come with the figures, the character cards, and the bat signal. This does come with a battery as well, so that's all covered. As you can see there, we do have symbols there from each of the franchise as well, most of them anyway. The top one, the first one covers from Batman 89 to uh, Batman and Robin. Obviously there we have the Dark Knight uh, symbol there, followed by the Justice League there, or Batman's bat symbol from Justice League, and then uh, Robert Pattinson's bat symbol from Justice there. So let's not hang around and let's take a look at the mighty Keaton Batman. Right, before we get started, let's take a quick look at the bat signal. So as you can see there, it has the uh, Christian Bale, Balesy Batman lens in there. And the base, as you can see, is just uh, at the top of the building there with some gargoyles on. This is quite big actually, it's a lot bigger than I was expecting it to be. On the back, uh, we do have the on-off switch and in there, there's a tab you just remove. As I say, it does come with batteries. And there, and there it is on. It's not an awfully bright thing, but uh, it looks quite nice anyway. Just turn that off. And then that just fits on the base like so. There we go. It just snaps in there and you can remove it again just by pinching those two pegs. So we'll change this over as we do have the uh, Mighty Keaton Batman to look at. And this is a bit of a, well, it's just in there quite firm. It's quite difficult to get off sometimes. It's just kind of, uh, there we go. So it's quite simple. Uh, there we go. 
As you can underneath, there's a little sort of cut out there. We can lift out the uh, lens and then you just replace it with the lens that you uh, require. So there we go. This does fit in a certain way. As you can see, there's like a little lug. It just fits in there. There we are. And then we just put the cap back over the top. Like so. Turn her on. And there we are. Just notice there, there's a scratch on there, so I reckon these things might scratch up quite easily. Um, it's not the most roundest of symbols either, it's quite jagged. But never mind. And then we also have the uh, Knight of Keats and Batman's uh, character card there. Again, in like this foil, I mean it is card. On the back there, just a uh, character profile there. I'm sure you all know who Michael Keaton's Batman is. And then the figure itself just that there we go so let's take a closer look at the uh, mighty michael keaton batman from batman 1989. so let's start with uh, the face sculpt now i will admit when i first saw the images of this i was not convinced that this looked anything like uh, michael keaton if anything i just thought they got the uh, bales batman head and just re-sculpted it and uh, yeah, called it the Keys and Batman. But to be fair, this does look pretty good in my humble opinion. It's obviously not a actually smashing the spot on resemblance of the Mighty Keys and a Batman, but I think they have done a pretty good job. The only thing that annoys me about this is that they have given him sort of head articulation as in he can turn his heads to the left and the right, which I think does take something away from this. But overall, I am actually quite happy with the way this looks. Now for the bat symbol, um, there are a few things with this. The black on there, the paint application, it's on there quite thin. So uh, you, can, you can see a bit of the yellow coming out in certain areas. Also, there is no a black around the uh, outside of the oval of his emblem there. It's just miss, been missed off completely. However, that being said, you know, it's not too much of a pain to uh, apply that yourself if you wanted to. And I do find that the emblem, to me, looks a little bit on the big side. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because it's missing that black ring. I'm not too sure, but uh, it looks pretty good overall. Just moving down to the sort of midsection, um, obviously there's a lot of abs on here. It's a typical sort of McFarlane build there. We have the articulation in the middle, but overall I think it's a pretty good sculpt. The belt, uh, it's very gold. Um, it is more of a yellow gold and a gold gold, but it looks fine. And really, just moving down to the sort of the boots, they look pretty good. They have, uh, you know, they are correct as far as I'm aware. They look pretty good. We have the usual articulation on the end of the toes. The only real problem I have with this figure is the cape. As you may see there, that on his cape is glue. So uh, what happened was, uh, as I removed the figure from the box, I couldn't. The, uh, the cape was snagged on something. After further investigation, I soon realised that the uh, cape was in fact glued down with the rest of the box. Uh, I did remove it as best I could, but yeah, it has left that sort of glue residue on the cape. Because it's soft goods, it has soaked in, so um, I should be able to get most of that out with a little bit of uh, IPA. Uh, but yes, it's a bit of a shame that, you know, that is on there because it wouldn't look perfect. Soft good cape, it, it's all right. It's sort of your typical one you might have found in the 90s on those sort of figures. It's quite thin and flimsy, uh, but it doesn't really take anything away from the figure. And sometimes it is quite nice just to have a uh, soft goods cape on these figures sometimes. Now, as I've already mentioned, uh, no accessories with these figures. Although, you know, these should be interchangeable with other McFarlane toys. I mean, they are you know, to the same scale as all the others. I know a lot of people had a complaint about the face sculpt, but honestly, I think this looks pretty good. 
Now I'm not usually one for comparing uh, one figure to another, but the head from the Mezco uh, Batman 89 figure there, as you can see, um, as I say, you can't really compare them because that's not fair, but I think they are, I mean, they're both pretty good, but obviously that was the better one, obviously, you know. But yeah, the McFarlane one, I think it is a perfectly uh, acceptable likeness for the Mighty Keaton Batman. It is just a shame that, you know, he can't, you know, that's not quite right. He can't turn his head. It would have been better if it was just sort of one mould, you know, like this one. It would have looked much nicer. But there we go. As you can see, look, there's the uh, black line around the edge of the uh, oval there, which is missing from this one. But that is it for this episode, episode one. Obviously in episode two, which will be following uh, shortly after this one, we'll be looking at the Val Kilmer Batman in the sonar suit from Batman Forever. So until that one, I'll see you later. It's Matt in the retro room. Join Matt in the retro room. In his retro room. Subscribe for more and stay tuned.